92.1 WROI, WROI FM.com. Streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5 and audio and video live on RTC Channel 4. Good morning, Scott. Good morning, Tom. Scott's back in the studio. Two days in a row that guy's been here. I heard him yesterday. <laughs> yeah. I didn't see him. I heard him. <laughs> well, he's, he's behind the camera. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. And, of course, download the TuneIn Radio app. Take us wherever you're going, which, of course, today would be to First Federal Savings Bank, where you can say hello to Dick Melcher. Hello. 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 going to be a great weekend. Yes, it is. We might get a little rain on Saturday, and that's good. We need rain. We do indeed. Farmers are winding down. They're getting their harvest done. Had a record year on uh, uh, good good weather. And Still a long time. But what he, conventions uh, come around he next next summer? Leading oh yeah. He says he's going to tone it down a little bit too, which I can't imagine. But he says that's what's <laughs> going to happen. Well, when Trump says he's going to turn it, yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Here uh, we'll have a little trivia this morning. You know, uh, this was the the week for the uh, Back to the Future yes, it was. movie. Right. They, Thirty they years ago. Thirty years ago, they predicted all these things to right. happen. One was uh, the Cubs would. Yeah, win. that was the only thing that didn't happen was the Cubs didn't win. Right, Scott. Yeah. Yes. All right. Now, what was the car that they had in that movie? It was the DeLorean, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Now, my trivia is. How many DeLoreans were made? Ooh. Was it 9,000, 24,000, or 38,000? At least we got a multiple choice on that. Yeah. It didn't last very long. No, it didn't. You know, DeLorean was a uh, engineer with uh, GM. He was. And he developed two muscle cars, the uh, two Pontiacs. Right. And then he thought he was really good. <laughs> so he went and started his own company. That didn't last very long, did it? Well, you know, you st to start a new company. I think he went uh, bankrupt with that company, didn't yes. he? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a nasty word. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Especially talk to a banker about it. That's right. Yeah. Well, they keep talking about Apple going to get into the car business. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Computerized cars, I suppose. I suppose, yeah. They might buy Tesla. Oh. They probably got the cash to do it. Oh yeah, they they got more cash than well. I was going to say the U.S. government, but U.S. government doesn't have. They don't have any cash. <laughs> they live on credit. <laughs> do they ever? <clears throat> and they wonder why they don't raise their interest rate. Yeah, that's so right. Somebody ought to figure out how much. If you raise a quarter, how much that costs the government? Okay. Well, the Cubs will wait. Well, wait till next year. Ah, oh, wait till next year. They're young. Yeah. They're young. Our volleyball team here at Rochester still continues. Yeah, they, they play uh, tomorrow at 11 down to Southwood, and that's against Cass, and then uh, in the championship game Saturday night after they beat Cass, that's, yeah, that's which we say they're going to do. Probably be another rematch between Rochester and Southwood. Always a good, good rivalry. That's right. And Rochester's only lost one game. Right. Okay, the uh, high school football section will start tonight. Right. Uh, the Zebras host Bremen. Right. And uh, you'll be there? Oh, yeah. Will. Scott, you doing that? No, we're not doing the boys' Bremen game. Uh, you're but not? Uh, viewers can check that out on uh, Channel 46 out of uh, South Bend. They're okay. coming down. Uh, the big boys, as we call them, they're coming down. <laughs> Going to film that. Okay. We will, however, Dick, I should mention this. We will cover the volleyball game down at Southwood. Okay. Okay. We are trying to go live if they will let us from Southwood. Wow. Yeah. Big time. Impressive. Live vo high school volleyball. Impressive. All because of Scott. That's right. Mm. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Blame where blame is due, right? <laughs> yeah. Bell Valley is at uh, Jimtown, North Miami, at Culver, Manchester, at Winnemac. <coughs> So that's kind of what's going on okay. in the high school sports. And uh, in college sports, uh, IU is at Michigan State. Okay. 3.30. You saw that IU game last year? Uh, I heard about it. You Let's put it that it? way. Yeah, I, I checked it out, and they were 25 points ahead, and I thought this game is over. Yeah. Was I wrong? Yes, I was. Yeah, yeah. The, the fat lady was warming yeah. up, but she never sang. No. Hmm. And did you see the Michigan State Michigan? End? That was a uh, that was quite the ending, wasn't it? Yeah, that's when Harbaugh had he had a gun with a shot at, uh, <laughs> or shot the kid. Too Oof. bad. Yeah. I'm 
not sure what that guy was trying to do, but uh, he'll he'll replay that the rest uh, of his one life. Though. Okay, I hope the Colts and the Saints Sunday. Yes, from Indianapolis. Big game for the Colts. They need to win. They need the win. Yeah. But Purdue's Drew Brees comes into town. Yeah. yeah. Drew gave Purdue a million bucks towards their new $60 million facility. Excellent. Well, excellent. That's only a million. Well, dollars. I know, but that's a step in the I mean, right direction. When, isn't you, it? when you're making 20 or 30 or 40 million. <laughs> well, but, but for Purdue, they've only got 59 million to go now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see, there's an old saying you don't improve the soldiers by painting the barracks. I <laughs> see. I'll remember that. <laughs> that's what they're going to do down there is paint the barracks. Paint the barracks, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. If I'm a little sarcastic, I'm a little sarcastic. <laughs> uh, you've heard that right. Uh, we can talk about the Rick Patino scandal. Oh, we could. Whew. Yeah. Again. How, how long are they going to... I don't know. This is what, second or third time oh, yeah. he's had issues. Yeah, but he, he didn't know anything about it. Oh, I didn't know anything about it. Yeah. Nope. Didn't know anything about it. Okay. Well, we got some interesting people we do. here with us. But uh, how do we get them on? Uh, we'll, we'll just just keep talking. Keep. <laughs> okay. All right. We got Jim Scott and Diane Tesler. They're here today to going to talk about the uh, Kiwana Art Festival. So, uh, Diane, tell us about it. Well, this is year number seventeen. Uh, it's amazing how you, you keep having fun each year, and um, it just keeps growing. Uh, it started off in the church basement of the Methodist Church on a Saturday night back in 1997. And each year, just added more artists, got bigger. You know, when I bought the Odd Fellows building, which became my studio, we had more space to do it. And uh, uh, a couple years ago, uh, we, uh, we got heat in the building, and I got solar power. And now we are adding a, an, an annex to the building. Uh, that's the Masonic uh, Hall across the street. And that's going to be my winter studio and, and a, more of a formal gallery. So that this is going to include that grand opening of that space. Plus, we're going to have music down at the Hartery, which is uh, the Old Baptist Church, which is we want to make into a performance space, an event space. So uh, that's just getting off the ground this year. Okay, so. now <clears throat> you you got the Odd Fellows and the Masons and the Baptists in, involved now. Right, right. Okay. Well, not the not the not the groups. Uh, I mean, I know. they left. They left. They you left the, the building. Yeah, okay. I got the. I, I got what they left behind. Okay. Uh. All right. <laughs> All right, Scott. You you've been involved in this. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how many uh, artists are going to be there and the times and so forth. I believe there's what. Thirty six artists. Thirty six artists. Mm -hmm. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, all of us artists, uh, we love to get together. We. A lot of times we don't see each other, um, and, and this is a, a great opportunity to see what everybody's doing, and there's music being played, and there's some refreshments, and um, great camaraderie, and, and really good, interesting art of all kinds. Yeah, that's the thing, art of all kinds. You know, you just made a very good point, because it's not just we think of art as paintings and things like that, but it's much more than that. Oh, it absolutely is. There's people that do pottery, and there's... Uh, People that do uh, wood, uh, all kinds of wonderful things out of out of wood. Uh, there's sculptures. There's stained glass. Uh, obviously, there's uh, prints and paintings and watercolors. There's, I mean, uh, you'll find something that that you like. Uh, obviously, it's uh, things for sale, but uh, just uh, I mean, obviously, you don't have to come and buy anything. It's wonderful if you do, but uh, just come over and enjoy. Uh, the surroundings, uh, the artwork, uh, and the people. Well, Diane, now tell us, uh, <clears throat> how did you get involved in this and why? Well, I back in, in uh, 1986, I came out with a friend to spend a weekend to paint out in Grass Creek. And uh, I just fell in love with the area. I was born in Fort Wayne and left when I was very young, so maybe it was one of those early childhood memories or something. But uh, I, I came out here every summer to paint because I found a lot of subject matter that I wanted to do. And uh, then in 91, I ended up buying a house in Kiwana. 
and then after that, I just started collect. You know how cat ladies collect cats? <laughs> well, that, that's how I get, get these buildings. <laughs> you okay. I thought maybe you were going to refer to that's how you catch these artists. <laughs> well, they just sort of show up too. You know, okay. it's, I, you don't have to. You know, after you know, you just get to know people. This is sort of an organic process. You know, you. You know, when I first moved to Kiwana, people told me, well, you've got to meet Jim Russell, you've got to meet, meet Wade, you know. And I met people, and then I met more people, and it just sort of, you know, evolved like that. Diane Tesler and Jim Scott, both involved in the Kiwana Art Show coming up. Tell us again the when and where. Okay, the name of our show this year is In Our Own Backyard, so you'll see a lot of scenes and, and things that you'll recognize. Uh, the show will take place Saturday and Sunday from 12 to 5, uh, and you'll find it on the main street of Kiwana, right at the blinking red light. And there's only one blinking red light. <laughs> That's right. So you, once you find that light, you, you've gotten to the right place. The one and only. Thank you oh. for stopping by. Oh, yes. And I also wanted to bring up the idea that we're going to have music at the Hartery. Uh, that's, that's the Old Baptist Church. That's, that happens at 5.30 on uh, Saturday night. Uh, and uh, Treated and Released will be playing there. So it's going to be okay. sort of our initial uh, program down there. Excellent. Great, great time. Uh, take a drive Sunday afternoon down there and take a look at it. Thank you, Good. Diane and uh, Jim, for stopping by today. Thanks. Okay, the yes, uh, yesterday's Treasure Craft Show is uh, 9 to 3 p.m. Saturday. That's tomorrow on okay. the Fulton County Forage Fairgrounds. As a fundraiser a, uh, for Relay for Life, several teams are putting on Zombie Prom from 4 to 7, October 31st. You know, Halloween's coming. It is coming yeah. up, that's right. Tenth <laughs> Annual Haunted Woods Trail will be uh, three weekends this year, Friday and Saturday, October 23rd and 24th, and October 30 and 31st at the Fulton County Historical Society. Excellent. Grounds. Tenth Annual Haunted, uh, or the uh, Woodlawn Hospital Community Outreach Program, uh, well aware, and the Purdue Extension Service Partner in the Dining with Diabetics program, the program which teaches how to lessen the health risk of diabetes. It's 9.30 to 11 a.m. on November 9, 13, 16, and 20. If you got uh, exposure to that or interest okay. in that, or got friends and neighbors involved in diabetes, uh, that's a great program to go see. Fulton County Parks Department will have a fish fry Friday, October 30th. That's a week from today. Carry out only at the Lions Club building. It's a busy day that day. From 4.30 to 7.30. Yeah, not to mention the Friday morning. Next That's Friday right, morning. we start Friday morning early. Tell us about that. Well, 7.30, we'll be on the air live with your program from Giretti's. We'll have coffee mugs to give away. We'll be buying the coffee for anybody that wants to stop by. You'll be talking with uh, Chad Hartzler and Phyllis Bittinger, the two chair people for the two political parties for the election coming up on Tuesday. By the way, early voting has already begun at the courthouse. Then at 8 o'clock or so, or a little after Barron's newscast at 8 o'clock, we'll talk with the two mayoral candidates. And at about 8.40, 8.45, the two candidates for city clerk treasurer, and it'll all be live on Channel 4 with Scott there smiling happily. So it should be a great morning, and we invite you to come by, have breakfast at Giretti's, grab a cup of coffee on us, and just enjoy the festivities, enjoy the surroundings. Candidates, coffee, and conversation. Okay, that's your plug. That's it, I'm done. Okay. Got all the way through. Okay. Rochester Community Schools will host a lunch and learn gathering at 11.30 a.m. November 4th at the Streamliner Restaurant. Board members and Superintendent Jana Vance will be there to answer questions. Those are nice, nice kind of events. An open forum there, right? So, well, we mentioned about Halloween coming. Trick or treat for Rochester has been determined to be 30th and 31st, 4:30 to 7. Right. And at Akron, 6 to 8 on October 31st. Okay. Flowers. We need some flowers. Sure. Right. Yeah. Beacon Credit Union, through its project Spotlight, presented a total of $2,500 to five area entities, Junior Achievement, Fulton Liberty Township Lions, United w w We Stand Ministry, uh, Akron and Matthews Market, and We Care Children's Ministry. Congratulations to them. 
Okay, money news. Money news. I see uh, that uh, tr Mr. Trump is uh, saying that our Fed chairman isn't going to raise rates till after the new president gets. Yeah, he's not sure about that either. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He's got his own. He's got his own beliefs, shall we say? Yeah, I hope. Okay, Dow was up 321. Yeah, yesterday. it was. Good day for the you know Dow. What, you know what drove that up? Yeah, McDonald's. Is it breakfast? Yeah. They reported uh, good good earnings. Yeah, well, they just started to breakfast. All day. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I can't believe that had any effect on the earnings. Uh, you never know. That's supposed to be causing a drop in tickets, uh, average ticket costs, because breakfast is cheaper than their Big Macs, and so... I just read an article about franchisees complaining about that, so I doubt that that was why they raised uh, their earnings. Glad Scott's here. Hey, when it comes to food, just ask. Especially fast food. Yes, sir. Oh, there you go. Okay. Well, McDonald's stock was up eight percent yesterday. Big jump. And year to date, it's up seventeen percent. Big jump. They got a new CEO. There. Yeah, they do. Brought him in from England or some way. Okay, we're open today at First Federal from 8.30 to 5. Tomorrow from 8.30 to noon. Our ATM is always open. Did I tell you we're buying new ATMs? No, you did not tell yeah, me we're, that. Yeah, we're Are you? buying new... Wow. new uh, Your ATMs get a lot of use. Yeah. And uh, they're pretty high maintenance. There's a lot of moving parts. Oh, right. So we're getting machines. Okay. They, they cost about uh, 50000 and the, the new tin can, as I call it, <laughs> what they put them in. You there. doing this for all your locations? Uh, no. Okay. Th three out of six. All right. But Rochester will get one. By the way, I commend your people at the drive-thru. They always have the little dog biscuits out there. And my dog just loves them. Yes, yeah. he does. He just thinks that's that's the highlight of his Saturday morning. Uh, we, we're, we're here to serve. <laughs> I understand. He doesn't deposit or, you know, but withdraw, but he he loves the dog biscuits. Now, when you talk about a dog deposit. <laughs> That's not pretty, is it? Mm. <laughs> Moving right along. Yeah. Got delayed there somewhere. If you're thinking about buying a home, look into our USDA loan program. It's available to eligible borrowers on homes in US, USDA eligible communities and Fulton County is an eligible community. Qualified buyers, uh, borrowers can get a loan uh, with zero down up to 102 percent of the appraised value on purchases which includes uh, the 2.75 percent USDA guarantee fee. No free lunch, it's got to be, it's got to be uh, insured. Ben Dalton and John Schaefer is uh, in our Rochester branch and Bill Morris is in Winnemac. They can give you all the details on this. Borrowers must be underwriting guidelines, and a delivery fee will be applicable to the loan. Keep in touch with what's happening on the following, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. First Federal is FDIC insured and an equal housing lender, and our NMLS number is three nine or nine or nine or twenty-seven. That's the one. Okay, Greg. Greg Dakota. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to have you. We, we you, you've pleasure. been here several. Uh, now, make sure the camera can see you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you're, let, me, you're, let me fix my hair. Yeah. Your okay. mother might be watching or something. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Tell yeah, us what is. you're doing down at Woodlawn. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month again already. Um, time flies. Um, we at Woodlawn, of course, offer screening and diagnostic mammography and other breast imaging on a, you know, everyday basis at the hospital. Um, this month we kind of try to promote breast cancer awareness. Um, it is a disease that affects quite a few persons in our community. Um, and we try to emphasize the importance of screening mammography. Um, that is the one tool that has been proven to reduce um, or save lives and we really you know want to promote that uh, try to get women to be aware of their health and and talk to their physicians or providers healthcare providers and 
get in for those screenings on a on a scheduled basis, um, so we could follow you know follow things and make sure. Was it the CDC this week that came out and, and with some recommendations in terms of how frequently women should have? Those yeah, exams? that that came up about a couple of years ago, and now oh, okay. it's back in the spotlight. Um, uh, just you know, of course, over the years they collect a ton of data on, on these and, and outcomes. Um, so there there's some talk about changing the screening age and the frequency um, we'll kind of see where it plays out uh, you know some of the different entities involved uh, you know American Cancer Society American College of Radiology they're still kind of hashing out okay where they think it should fall so uh, well the report I read is uh, they were recommending starting sooner but not as frequently yeah yeah. So, well, uh, now you got people out there. We know that should have this. Uh, how how do they get it? Can they can, do they have to be referred by their physician, or can they just call the hospital? Um, they can just call the hospital and set up an appointment for a screening mammogram. Um, the hospital or Fulton County Medical Clinic okay. here downtown does them as well. Um, they can call and set up that appointment. Uh, we'll send the results to their provider, um, and then any follow-ups, of course, they'll go through their health care provider for anything that may be needed there. Um, if they are having any issues or problems um, that they're concerned about, they really need to talk to their health care provider before scheduling that. Um, you know, it changes the process a little bit so we can make sure we evaluate things correctly. So. Okay, Greg, tell us uh, what your job is at Woodlong and how long you've been there. I'm the Director of Diagnostic Imaging. I've been at Woodlawn, well, I, I was there for 10 years. I left for a short term, went back to my hometown on the West Coast, um, but wound up coming back, um, which was a great move for us. And uh, We've been here, or I've been here another 11 years now. So. 20 summers. Yeah. Okay. You must like it. Yeah, okay. I do. And lots of changes in technology in that period of time. Right? Oh, gosh, a lot. A lot. So, um, never a dull moment. <laughs> um, no, we, I love Woodlawn. It's been a great place to work, a great place for my career, and, um, you know, I great people to work with. Well, tell us about some, some of the upgrade in technology that you've had in the last few years. Um, in the last few years, of course, we, we went completely digital in our department. Um, in x-ray, mammography, everything is digital now, um, which allows us a lot of flexibility in, in image transfer and care. Um, so you can transfer that to any place in the U.S.? Huh, well, not quite. Okay. Uh, Theoretically, yes, but... <laughs> and that's coming one of these days. <laughs> it is coming. We right. actually are working on a lot of connections throughout the state with different facilities now, so we look to slowly expand that. Um, you know, there's some there's some hoops to jump through for all that to take place, but uh, we're working towards that. Um, we did recently purchase our new MRI. I think if people saw, you know, a lot of action going on back in in the June, July time frame with that transition, but that's working out well. Okay, now, why did we need a new MRI machine? Um, when we first put our in-house MRI, when we did the construction, we, you know, we got a good deal. We were breaking into the realm of having our own MRI built into the building. Um, so we bought a, a, what we call Gold CR refurbished unit so the software was getting outdated. Um, worked with General Electric and we worked to get a better up-to-date, most advanced technology along with a, a caring suite for the patients. Um, and we wound up, you know, a price point. We looked kind of like at our cost reports and it wound up uh, being quite the deal for us. Um, not not much more monies involved on a month-to-month -month basis so um, we look like you know look to it and it was really a benefit for the patients so. excellent well uh, 
Yeah, the state of the art now in the MRI machine. Yeah, it is. It's a it's a wonderful machine. Does a lot for you know imaging imaging wise a lot. But the caring suite that was paired with it um, is you know I really encourage people to give us a chance to check it out. It's you know, LED lighting, video screen, music, we can change colors in the room, <laughs> oh, patients can wow. pick their scenes, um, it's an open, more open space. Uh, the yeah, magnet, I think that's one of the big points I've heard about it, is there's more open right. space. Yeah, it and doesn't the, make you claustrophobic. Yeah, and the magnet you go into is, is about half the length and it's a lot wider. People can go in feet first or head first for exams, um, it's had it, Great results for those patients that have wow. suffered from claustrophobia, which it, you know is a lot more than you would imagine. So. Greg Dakota, thank you, thank you for stopping by this morning, and again, uh, to tell people that are interested and in, tell them why they should be getting uh, their uh, be looking at breast awareness uh, cancer month. Well, you know, breast cancer again is, is one of the top. Uh, processes or, or you know things that can cause deaths in the female population and it does affect the male population as well um, screening mammography is you know the only tool that's been proven to really reduce lives at this point um, and it is important that you know you do your self checks you talk to your provider if you notice any changes and that you get in and have that screening and baseline mammography done so that changes can be detected early um, the results are better as far as cure rates when they are detected early so it is really uh, makes a difference in your health early detection like you say can result in cures right yeah okay good point and I think uh, what I've read that, that the breast cancer of all the cancers is uh, more controllable than most is that correct yeah I mean there it's uh, it's quite a complicated process but in general I, yeah that is a correct especially if you get it early, early yeah, especially right. if you get it early that's that is the key and that's what the importance of the screening okay if you're interested in getting screening uh, Call Woodlawn Hospital and they can set you up with a uh, an appointment and uh, get that done. That's right. You bet. You Thank bet. you for stopping by. Thank you. And just remember that October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Correct. See a lot of a lot of pink uh, yeah. going on, and I got a little thing here you this do. morning. Right. So, okay, uh, we we talked about the DeLorean. Uh, Car being built, was it? Did they build nine thousand, twenty-four thousand, or thirty-eight thousand? Uh, about twenty-four. Dina likes that middle one. I say nine. You're right. Go nine thousand. Just nine. Wow. And they, it's estimated that there are only about six thousand uh, still around. Still around. Wow. Okay, let's. I got two things here to close with. I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Well, first of all, Conrad Hilton once said, "Successful people keep moving." They make mistakes, but they don't quit. I like that. And then here's one I don't know who said it. Somebody anonymous. Anonymous. Another yeah, anonymous. Yeah. Optimism is, and I like optimism. Right. Is going after Moby Dick in a rowboat and <laughs> taking the tartar sauce with you. <laughs> well said, Dick Belcher. Thank you very much for being here in the first federal program, Scott. Thanks for being in the thanks, studio Scott. this morning. We appreciate it. Buying your first home? Let the experts at First Federal Savings Bank help you through the process. At First Federal, all of their mortgage loans are serviced locally with payment options that are convenient for you. Their staff will work with you answering your questions and providing professional service. First Federal will even pay standard closing costs for qualifying first-time home buyers. Just another way, First Federal takes care of you, your local mortgage lender.